Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you all to the August 8th meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. My name is Jeff Carson. I'll be serving as chair of tonight's meeting. I want to make a few introductions before we get started. Karen Jones will be um, serving as vice chair this evening. Byron Toy with Department of Land Use and Urban Planning will be assisting us tonight along with Janet Parker, the executive assistant to the Department of, urban, of Land Use and Urban Planning. We also have Patrick Waters who will be joining us with Unified Government Legal Council. And we have the following Unified, excuse me, the following Board of Zoning Commissioners present. Dwayne Beth, Commissioner James Connolly, Commissioner James Ernst, Commissioner Karen Jones, again, serving as vice chair, Commissioner Jake Miller, Commissioner, do we have Joseph Straws? We do not, okay. And Commissioner Aaron Ward. With that, I will turn it over to Secretary Parker who will read the opening statement about how we'll run the meeting this evening. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I would like to also introduce uh, Mr. James Malloy. He has served as an intern in our office and he was just recently hired uh, to our open planner position. And he Thank is in the commission chamber. Thank you. Well, welcome, Mr. Malloy. Um, I need to, I'm trying to move Daniel over to the meeting. I can't, I'll go ahead with the statement if you can see if you can move him. Okay. Okay. We would like to welcome those participating by Zoom or in the lobby, or sorry, in the commission chamber to the meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Members of the Board of Zoning Appeals are participating remotely by Zoom or in the Commission Chamber. Mr. Jeff Carson is serving as chairman this evening. Please note the following instructions for the meeting. If you are joining by Zoom video, please make sure you have an appropriate background and plan to stay visible during the meeting. Board members, please use the raise your hand feature when you want to speak. And after Chairman Carson recognizes you, please unmute your microphone and state your name when you begin to speak. If you need to recuse or take a break, use the raise your hand feature. For those attending the meeting this evening, please use the raise your hand feature if you want to speak on an application. If you're in the commission chamber, please come to the front of the room when the application that you're interested in is called and staff will let us know that you would like to speak. After the chairman recognizes you, please state your name and address and make your comments. If you are having issues getting in the Zoom meeting, please email planninginfo at wycokck.org and let Secretary Parker know. Proper meeting decorum is expected of all participating in the meeting and anyone who fails to act properly will be removed from the meeting. The city reserves the right to discontinue a meeting if any improper behavior occurs, which prevents the uninterrupted conduct of business. The format for this evening's meeting is as follows. The applicant will make the opening statement explaining the proposal. The applicant will be given 15 minutes to present their case, which includes the applicant, consultants, and other members of the applicant's team. Members of the board will then address any questions they may have to the applicant. Any persons wishing to speak in favor will be recognized and allowed to do so at that time. Then those persons in opposition will be recognized to make their statements and ask questions with each member of the public being given five minutes to express their opinions. Time may not be shared between speakers. A speaker's time may be extended in five minute intervals by a two thirds majority vote of the board. The applicant will then answer questions and make a closing statement. The public hearing portion of the meeting will then be closed and the public will only be allowed to address the board if a question is directed to them. The staff will make their recommendation and the board will discuss the application and make their decision with a brief statement of the reason for the motion preceding the making of the motion. Motions to approve shall include the staff stipulations unless otherwise stated in the motion. Mr. Chairman, our first application is BOZA 2022-035, Josh Boyer for property at 217 South 74th Street. At this time, does any member of the board have any contact to disclose regarding this application? 
No. no. Thank you. And Janet, would you also let the record reflect that Commissioner Pauly is now online with us and uh, Daniel Kuhn has joined us uh, for representing the Youth Line Government Legal Council. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Boyer, are you in the audience? Josh Boyer? Mr. Malloy, is Mr. Boyer in the uh, commission chambers? Sorry about that. He's in the commission chamber. All right, thank you. Mr. Boyer, would you go ahead and step to the mic, please? Give us your name and address and tell us about your project. Yeah, my name is Josh Boyer. I live at 217 South 74th Street. Um, <clears throat> I'm just looking to build a, a garage, a shop that exceeds the thousand square feet limit. Um, I've got a two acre property, so I don't feel like the, the thousand square foot, um, well, the over thousand square foot is really going to uh, create a hindrance on my property or, or be overwhelming on the property itself. Um, so it's just a large shop, a hobby room, uh, work on cars for myself and do woodworking projects, things like that. Nothing, nothing commercial, um, just a, a place for, for me to hang out. And do you have any existing structures on that property? There is a, uh, there's a chicken coop in the back there and there's a carport which um, has been brought up in in the report those will be removed as i i build this uh new building okay so you're going to remove those two and then replace with one correct correct okay great thank you any questions from the commission <clears throat> seeing none anyone in the audience want to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request please your, raise your hand online or come to the microphone Okay, I'm seeing none online. Mr. Malloy, anyone in the audience want to speak? There's nobody in the audience that wants to speak, sir. All right, thank you. Okay, I'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to uh, Mr. Toy and get staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends approval separate of the stipulations outlined in the staff report. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Toy? Okay, seeing none, I'll stand for a motion. Commissioner Miller. Move to approve BOZA 2022-35, subject to staff stipulations and comments. A motion has been made by Commissioner Miller to, for approval. Is that a second, Commissioner Jones? Yes, it is. Thank you, it's been moved and seconded for approval. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Jones. Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approve, or I'm sorry, to approve this appeal subject to the conditions in the staff report passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. Our next application is BOZA 2022-037, Wiley-Denton, for property at 2730 South 69th Street. Does any member of the board have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Denton, are you in the audience in the chambers or are you online? If you please come to the microphone or raise your hand online, please. I'm not seeing anyone online, Mr. Malloy. Do we have anyone in the audience representing Mr. Denton? No, sir, we do not. Wiley Denton, are you in the audience? Please raise your hand or come to the microphone. Okay, not seeing or hearing anyone. I'm gonna go ahead and go to staff. Uh, Byron, do you wanna go ahead and present on this one? Yeah, that's not a problem. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Chairman. So, the, so this is really to fix a non-conforming issue that the lot is three times as a, the depth as it is wide. Um, it's located kind of in the Turner area, as you can see here in the aerial photograph. Uh, it's a very narrow front inch along the street, very deep in the rear. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, again, this is to fix a non-conforming situation. 
staff recommends approval. Thank you. Are there any questions for, I'm sorry, anyone in the audience come tonight to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request, either online or in commission chambers? Raise your hand or please come to the microphone. We do have one. Okay. We do have okay. one person in the commission chamber that would like to speak. Okay, I do have a question from Commissioner Conley first. Commissioner Conley? I can barely hear Byron. It's kind of yeah. We will, yes, Byron, we are having trouble with your microphone. It's because dogs love me. Okay. Um, let's go to the audience member, uh, Mr. Malloy. Please come to the microphone, give us your name and address. Uh, I am Helen Hokinson. I live at 6453 Cernich Road. I also own a home at 419 South 81st Street. Um, I'm here in support of this um, um, variance. Urban agriculture improves neighborhoods from within that neighborhood. It improves safety because people are outside watching. Um, we can grow a lot of food and um, uh, vacant lots are a blight and when someone's there using that land, um, it improves the health and well-being of community members, getting them outside, moving around. Um, gardens have the ability, farming um, has the ability to sequester carbon um, instead of just having vacant lots and brown dirt. And um, uh, farming brings pollinators, grows food, builds community, and creates better health outcomes. So I'm here in support of this variance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Mr. Malloy, we good at the commission chambers? Yeah, no one else in the commission chamber, All right, Chairman. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close the public portion of the meeting. Um, Mr. Toy, did you want to make any final comments on this case? Yes, I would actually. Thank you. So the applicant will be coming back for a change of zone to rezone it from R1 to AG Agricultural District. Um, that will allow him to have livestock or any, any other agricultural use he desires in the property. But again, that will be heard before uh, September 12th, 2022. Most staff recommends approval. All right, thank you. Any questions for staff? Seeing an all energy, I'm sorry, Commissioner Miller, is that a question or a motion? I was going to make a motion. Go ahead, please. Um, move to approve uh, BOZA 2237, subject to staff stipulations and comments. Thank you. Motion has been made for approval by Commissioner Miller. Is there a second? Commissioner Jones? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion for approval? Seeing none, roll call, please. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Polly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to approve this appeal, subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. This will conclude the agenda for the Board of Zoning Appeals. We will be in recess for about 15 minutes, then we will convene the City Planning Commission. So uh, we will see you all in about 15 minutes. Thank you.
Mr. Malloy. Yes, ma'am. That is perfect. We can see the um, the place there where everyone speaks. So that's a good a good spot. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Hey, Janet, is that microphone better? Yes, it is. Uh, say something else for me, please. Uh, test one, two, three. Yes, that is a lot better. Thank you. No problem. That camera sure helps out. Yes, it does. That makes it uh, makes a world Mo of difference. Mr. Malloy took that down and hooked it up to his laptop. Also, we also moved Mr. Toy to a different microphone. Okay, great. Thank you.
Janet, are we ready to go? <clears throat> I do have 6.30. I'm looking to see if everybody is, it looks like everyone's back. Yes, sir. I'm ready to go. Great. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you all to the August 8th meeting of the City Planning Commission. My name is Jeff Carson. I'll be serving as chair of tonight's meeting. Along with me, we have Karen Jones. She will be serving as vice chair. We have the following members present tonight in terms of commissioners. Commissioner Dwayne Beth is in the lobby. Commissioner James Connolly is via Zoom, along with Commissioner Ernst, Commissioner Jake Miller, Commissioner Susanna Pauly, Commissioner Joseph Straws, and we have Commissioner Aaron Ward also in the lobby. We're joined by Daniel Kuhn, Unified Government Legal Counsel, Byron Toy with the Unified Government Planning Staff, Janet Parker, the Executive Assistant, to the Department of Land Use and Urban Planning. And Mr. Malloy is also in the lobby helping us out this evening also uh, from the planning staff. So with that, I will turn the meeting over to Secretary Parker who will read the opening statement and tell everyone how we will run the meeting tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We would like to welcome those participating to the meeting of the City Planning Commission. The members are participating remotely by Zoom webinar or in person in the commission chamber. Mr. Jeff Carson is serving as chairman this evening. Please note the following instructions for this meeting. If you are joining by Zoom video, please make sure you have an appropriate background and plan to stay visible during the meeting. Planning Commission members, please use the raise your hand feature to speak after Chairman Carson recognizes you. Unmute your microphone and please state your name when you begin to speak. For those in attendance via Zoom or telephone, use the raise your hand feature when you want to speak on an issue. The chairman will recognize you when it is your time to speak. Unmute your microphone and state your name and address before giving your comments. If you are attending in person, please come to the microphone at the front of the room when the application is called and Planner Toy will inform the chairman of how many people wish to speak and how many persons want to raise their hand either in favor or opposition. Proper meeting decorum is expected of all participating in the meeting and anyone who fails to act properly will be removed from the meeting. The city reserves the right to discontinue a meeting if any improper behavior occurs, which prevents the uninterrupted conduct of business. The Planning Commission is a voluntary body of citizens which re will review each zoning proposal for all change of zones, special use permits, vacations and preliminary plan reviews on tonight's agenda, the Planning Commission makes recommendations to the Unified Government Board of Commissioners, who will then make the final decisions on Thursday, August 25, 2022. For final plats and final plan reviews heard tonight, the Planning Commission's decision is final and there will not be another hearing. The format for this evening's meeting is as follows. The applicant will make the opening statement explaining the proposal. Please note that the applicant will be given 15 minutes to present their case. The 15 minutes includes the applicant, consultants, and other members of the applicant's team. Members of the Planning Commission will then address any questions they may have to the applicant. Any persons wishing to speak in favor will be called upon and allowed to do so at that time. Then those persons in opposition will be called upon and allowed to make their statements and ask questions. Please note that each member of the public who wishes to speak will be given five minutes to express their opinions. Time may not be shared between speakers. A speaker may request to extend their time and the Planning Commission may, by two thirds majority vote, extend any speaker's time in five minute increments. The applicant will then answer questions and make a closing statement. The public hearing portion of the meeting will then be closed and the public will only be allowed to address the commission if a question is directed to them. The planning commission will discuss the application and make their recommendation. If persons in opposition want to formally protest a change of zone or special use permit, a means is available by a legal protest petition which can be obtained along with the necessary instructions by me emailing the Planning and Urban Design Department at planninginfo at wicokck.org tomorrow morning. 
Any application receiving a unanimous vote of recommendation by the Planning Commission will appear on the consent agenda of the Unified Government Board of Commissioners. Unless there is a request to remove an item from the consent agenda by the applicant, a member of the Unified Government Commission, or other interested parties, the Planning Commission's recommendation will be adopted. The consent agenda is heard at the beginning of the meeting at 7 p.m. The Planning Commission will also have a consent agenda as part of their meeting this evening. The consent agenda is the first part of the agenda and items on the consent agenda are final plans, final plans, or special use permit renewals that have received a staff recommendation to approve. Unless there is a request to remove an item from the consent agenda by the applicant, a member of the staff, a member of the planning commission, or other interested parties. The staff recommendation on all of the items on the consent agenda will be adopted by the Planning Commission at one time. I will read a list of agenda items on the consent agenda. And when I have completed the list, the chairman will ask if there are any requests to remove items. This is your time to use the raise your hand feature, be recognized and request that an item be removed from the consent agenda if you do not agree with the staff's recommendation. If you're in the commission chamber, please come to the microphone. And when you're recognized, you can request that an item be removed from the consent agenda. The Planning Commission is required to disclose contacts about any item on the Planning Commission agenda. Before each item, I will ask if any contacts have been made and members of the commission will be asked to disclose those contacts. Please note that your opinions will be forwarded to the governing body for their consideration in making a final decision. In addition, those who receive notices for this hearing will again receive them for the hearing on Thursday, August 25, 2022 at 7 p.m. I will now read the items on the consent agenda. Consideration of the July 11, 2022 Planning Commission Minutes. Special Use Permit Application, SP 2022-061. Tom Giffer with G&G &G Holdings, LLC. Renewal of a Special Use Permit, SP 2019-111, for the temporary use of land to stockpile and process concrete materials at 7241 Caw Drive. Special Use Permit Application SP 2022-075, Kristen Ryman and Kate Lynch. Renewal of a Home Occupation Special Use Permit SP 2020-038 for a home occupied short-term rental at 2824 North 99th Terrace. Plat 2022-020, McLaughlin Edition. Final plat to construct a single family residence at 3015 and 3020 North Baltimore Avenue. The items I have just read are on the consent agenda. At this time, does any member of the commission wish to disclose any contact on any of these items? No. Thank you. Is there anyone oh, on the, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Please include the following items as part of the record for all of the items on the consent agenda. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022, the application of their documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file the publications in the echo for the special use permits and the notices to property owners. The commission will vote to approve in one vote these items unless someone requests that an item be removed from the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there anyone Commissioner on Ward. The, Yes, Commissioner Ward, go ahead. Is there anyone on the commission that wants to have anything removed from the consent agenda? Commissioner Ward. Uh, yeah. I was like to have uh, SP 2022-061 removed. Okay, and I think Commissioner, or I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Toy is gonna have some comments about why that was referred back. 
Uh, so that may take care of the questions you might have outstanding. Uh, anyone else on the commission want anything removed from the consent agenda? Okay, anyone in the audience would like to have anything removed from the consent agenda for special consideration, please raise your hand or come to the microphone. Okay, seeing none, we will remove uh, SP 2022-61 from the consent agenda and I'll now entertain a motion to accept the remaining items. Commissioner Jones. Motion to approve the remaining items on the consent agenda. Thank you. Commissioner Pauly, is that a second? It is. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded to approve the remaining items on the consent agenda. Roll call, please. Jones. Aye. Filler. Aye. Polly. Aye. Ward. Aye. Beth. Aye. Conley. Aye. Burns. Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to approve the remaining items on the consent agenda subject to the conditions in the staff report passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that now takes us to the one item that was removed from the consent agenda, special use permit application SP 2022-061. Tom Giffer with G&G Holdings LLC. Renewal of a special use permit for the temporary use of land to stockpile and process concrete material at 7241 Caw Drive. Thank you. Mr. Giffer, are you in the audience or anyone representing Mr. Giffer? Please come to the microphone or raise your hand. There we go. Mr. Giffer, I've got you queued up, ready to speak. If you would, please go ahead and give us your name and address and tell us about this project. Yes, Tom Giffer. Giffer, G, G, yeah, you got it spelled wrong on there. It's G-I-E-F-E-R. Anyway, yeah, we're at 7241 Call Drive. Uh, I... <clears throat> I think we were pretty close to getting approval for this special use permit, but the planning commission wants railroad warning or railroad crossing signs put up um, at the crossing. We currently have a, and have had for, I don't know, almost six months of, of warning signs, uh, warning drivers when they leave our property to look both ways at the railroad tracks. It's on our property. I haven't, it's kind of, uh, I haven't really heard of any city requesting a private entity to install a railroad warning sign on public right of way. <clears throat> is what I was looking for a little direction from Public Works Department. I haven't got any yet, but we're willing to do whatever we need to to <clears throat> suffice the planning commission. But uh, I don't think uh, that's us specifying our own sign on a public road is not, uh, doesn't seem right. But. Anything else? No, I, and I'd like to have a contact with public works. Do you got, would you guys know who that would be? We'll, we'll make sure that the staff gets you the required information after the meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any questions for the applicant? Commissioner Ward? Yes, I do. Um, so I was, uh, some questions about, um, some, uh, some fatality accidents that happened acro across that, uh, railroad tracks. Uh -huh. Um, do you have any information about those accidents? Yeah, they were both Geiger ready mix drivers and <clears throat> not sure, uh, if they were, what the issue is with their ready mix guys, but we haven't, other than that, we haven't had any other. They're actually not using the site anymore, by the way, but uh, we have met after that last fatality, there was a meeting on site with the railroad safety people. And there was some talk about signs, adding signs then, and they basically shot that down. <clears throat> so they might have to be involved in, in something uh, as far as signs, if we're going to do that. Um, like I said, we're willing to do it what we need to, but uh, basically just unsafe driving is, you know, what it is when they're not looking at train, not looking for trains, so. No, understandable. I just, um, 
Was there any discussion about actually having the the uh, the gates that come down like there are at many railroad crossings? So <clears throat> there, when we started using that property on that road, uh, I was contacted by the UP safety manager in Denver and they were not, I asked her if they would do that and they were not interested in doing that. I think it's uh, something the railroad has to approve, but uh, obviously but, uh, at the time they said no. So. so at this, so at this time, you, you don't know who would be responsible for installing equipment like that. Is that you or is it UP or we just don't know well, at this point? There's two choice. You get if you stay out of there, there right away, you're probably all right. But it's a city or a county city owned road, so for us to come up with our own sign design and submit it to the public work, usually public works has standard specifications they go by, which I'm sure all you people know. But it'd be better for them to tell us what they want to be put in there right away, instead of me hiring an engineer and submitting some to them. But, uh, okay. Okay, and the, the second question I had was, um, um, I believe some neighbors had some complaints about dust um, and how the uh, the, dust well, is, the dust is a serious <laughs> issue for them. I was just want to know, have you heard that before? And if you have, what's been done? We did when we were running, getting the first uh, special use permit, there was, we had addressed that and we, anytime we, it gets dusty down there, we we run a water truck over it and I there's no complaints that I know of uh here in the last two years after we start doing that so I think it's been mitigated so have you had any contact with anybody across this across the uh across the road from you that um have they come to you at all or is that just nothing in no. the last two years period no we have not okay any other questions Commissioner Beth, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. Is is a study been done, or can he tell us uh, approximately how much traffic does use that crossing? Uh, you know, in a day's period, or well, there's. So just... <clears throat> I mean, we could come up with that pretty easily. There's two business. There's my business that trucks are running in and out of. I'd say anywhere from twenty to thirty a day, maybe. And then uh, Def and Ball's got that place next to us that so runs in and out there quite a bit. Um, but it would be easy to come up with a traffic count for sure. So, so you have 20 or 30 a day uh, in addition with Def and Bob <laughs> running? Yeah, and I couldn't tell you how many they got running in and out there. It could be pretty close to the same. It could be that. I don't, I'm not sure without spending some time down there, but. Okay. Anything else? Anyone in the audience want to speak in favor of or in opposition to this case, please raise your hand or come to the microphone. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to Mr. Toy and get staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So as, as uh, Commissioner Ward stated, this petition was referred back by the board commissioners uh, to the planning commission to look at safety. <clears throat> so staff contacted the applicant uh, to see what could be done. So we suggested that I reached out to, actually I personally reached out to public works <clears throat> and because it's a private crossing and not a public crossing like you see on South 88th street, for example, um, he proposed, Troy Shaw, the county engineer proposed that the applicant's consultant, the engineer come up with signage and submit it to public works. They would then review it and issue their approval based on what they submitted. And then they could go ahead and construct it on their property. Um, also related to, related to dust mitigation commission work. <clears throat> it, is on this, it is in the application in the staff report on comment number eight that specific, specifically talks about uh, daily, actually daily water um, to mitigate dust and that being an issue. I suggest the applicant adhere to that because if it doesn't, then this application can be brought back for revocation with that staff reckons approved for two years to monitor safety across that crossing. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Yeah, one, one question, I'm sorry. Commissioner Ward. Ward. Um, and you might have to check this, I don't know, but what warrants 
having a certain type of crossing at a railroad crossing? Do you know? I mean, for safety purposes, I mean, two fatalities within a five-year period would be, I mean, that's that's nothing to, I mean, I know he probably wasn't trying to do that, but he said, he said, other than those two, we've had nothing. Well, that's two deaths is too, 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 too many probably. And I know it's probably driver inattention. I'm not saying that, but um, what warrants more be done there to, to make people safe going across there and make them pay attention. I honestly do not know what measures can be put in from a, for example, like the UG standpoint, um, since it is a railroad right of way. Um, I can say for anything that is on the applicant's property, whether it's signage that is, you know, like we have hawker lights when you have a, a pedestrian crossing across a uh, parking lot or an intersection, you know, internal to the property facing north or facing south, but going north across that intersection before you hit, before, right before you hit the stop sign, have that be a spot that they can internally saying flashing light, look both ways type of thing. But as far as something that's in the right of way, which is in that case, the Union Pacific right of way, that's to the applicant's point, that is dealing with the Union Pacific Railroad. Okay. And so, and, and to your knowledge, the Union Pacific Railroad has not contacted you guys about? No, they have not contacted staff, no. About the issues that occurred there or anything? No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for staff? Commissioner Connolly? Yeah, Byron, you don't think it's something that Pacific Railroad should have to put up because it's their railroad? I mean, we can ask them to put something up, excuse me, but with it being a federal entity, you know, maybe Patrick, you could maybe could add something about getting a federal entity to do something in the right of way. Yeah, Patrick Waters, Deputy Chief Counsel. We really have no control. Um, we can certainly request it, um, but we, we really have no leverage that would require them. Um, I think, you know, they... They have their own internal process, I assume, in terms of determining which crossings get those. Um, and uh, but, but it's it's not something something that we, we could require. All right, thanks. Any other One questions? More question. Sorry, One more question. Mr. Ward. I'm sorry. Is this does something like this uh, would this warrant a traffic study? I mean, typically typically the use like this where you're having Grading operations typically doesn't because it's not a, something that will continually be there indefinitely. Um, you know, it's something you see fit, then you have the you have the ability to ask for that. But typically, with grading operations or dirt fill, dirt removal, um, we're not typically seeing traffic studies. Okay, and. And, this, and so right now we just know of the, of the two fatalities as, as there have been any more accidents at that location besides the two fatalities. Well, what staff could find would be the one fatality and the two in total two accidents. Okay. Other questions for staff? Seeing none, I'll stand for a motion. Commissioner Ward. Mr. Ward, go ahead. I move we hold this over for 60 days to have a traffic study completed for this intersection for safety purposes. Hmm. Motion has been made for a 60 day holdover. Is there a second? Commissioner Beth, I'll second it. I moved and seconded for a 60 day holdover to perform a traffic study. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Holly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Nay. Mr. Chairman, that motion to hold over this application for 60 days for a traffic study to be completed passes six in favor and one opposed. All right, thank you. And the date of that meeting will be October the 10th. All right, this, this case will be heard again, once again on October 10th. 
Mr. Chairman, that concludes the consent agenda. Um, the one special use permit that was recommended for approval will be heard by the Board of Commissioners on August 25th at 7 p.m. Thank you. We will now move on to the non-consent agenda. And our first item is change of zone application COZ 2022-022. Andrea Wishhoff with Atlas Land Consulting. Change of zone from R1 single family district to R2 two family district to construct a duplex at 4744 George Avenue. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022, the application and other documents, plans, pictures, and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandotte Echo, and the notices to property owners. At this time, does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Swishup, are you in the audience? Or There we go. Mr. Tom Thompson, are you here to speak on this case? Uh, yes, I am. Can you guys hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Give us your name and address, please. Um, Austin Thompson, Atlas Lane Consulting, 2300 Hutton Road, Suite 108, Kansas City, Kansas 66109. Um, and just like uh, Ms. Parker had said, we are just looking to try to change this um, from an R1 district to R2. Our client is looking to build a duplex on this property. Um, it's pretty cut and dry, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Questions for the applicant? Seeing none, anyone in the audience want to speak in favor of or in opposition of this request, please raise your hand or come to the microphone. Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to uh, Mr. Toy to get staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends approval, separate stipulations outlined in the staff report. Thank you. Questions for staff? Seeing none, I'll stand for a motion. Commissioner Jones? Motion to approve subject to staff stipulations and comments. Thank you. Motion to approve made by Commissioner Jones. Is that a second, Commissioner Con or excuse me, Polly? It is. Thank you. Motion uh, made and seconded for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Polly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of change of zone 2022-022 subject to the conditions in the staff report passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. This will be heard once again on August 25th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> excuse me. I have five applications that we're going to hear together and then we will vote on them separately. And they are all located at 2640 Wood Inn Lane. Master Plan Amendment MPL 2022-014. Curtis Peterson with Polson LAPC. Master Plan Amendment from Low Density Residential Citywide Master Plan to Rural Density Residential Citywide Master Plan. Change of Zone Application COZ 2022-023. Curtis Peterson with Polson LAPC. Change of Zone from RP5 Planned Department District to AG Agriculture District to construct endless outdoors nature experience. Special Use Permit Application SP 2022-073. Special Use Permit to develop and operate a youth outdoor nature experience facility with trails, camping, and shelters. Platt 2022-021, endless outdoors, preliminary and final plat for one lot. Plan review application PR 2022-024, preliminary and final plan review for endless outdoor nature 
experience. Mr. Chairman, please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022, the application and other documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandotte Echo, and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Thank you. Mr. Peterson, I've got you queued up to speak. Go ahead, please. Give us your name and address and tell us about this project. Hi, Chairman. Kirk Peterson, 948th place, Kansas City, Missouri. Here on behalf of Endless Outdoors, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. With me by Zoom is Nick Christensen, who is the founder and CEO of this 501c3. He's a very successful businessman that has taken his skill set and gifts and directed it toward his passion for getting children, including my five little children, out from behind their screens and indoors and out to the wonderful uh, God made outdoors. Also, we have available, if needed, our civil engineer, Andrew Talkin from Continental, and our architect from 621 Architecture, which is Dan Brown. As you heard very briefly, as Miss Janet read out loud, this is all together, the master plan amendment, change of zone, special use permit, preliminary and final plan, and the final plan rolled into one. The specific site to be considered here tonight, and Miss Parker, do I, am I able to share screen here? Let's see here. Let me move you over to panelist and then uh, I can let you share your screen. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Peterson, you're good now. Mr. Peterson, we cannot hear you. I'm not sure if you are talking or not. I can see you moving the cursor around, but I cannot, I can no longer hear you. How about that, Mr. Chairman? There we go. We're good? Yep, I can hear you now. Thank you. And, and we can see your presentation. Thank you. So on the screen in front of you, you'll see an the site that is at issue today has a yellow boundary. It's approximately 26 acres located very generally uh, east of 635 and north of I-35. The proposed use for this 26 acre site will be a base camp as Endless Outdoors calls it. Uh, which Mr. Consists... Peterson, uh, now we're, looking, we do, we're now we do looking not have at your, your presentation calendar. on screen. We're looking at your Outlook calendar now, Mr. Peterson. Was it interesting or? There we go, this is better, right? There we go. Thank you. So where I was at is the use of this uh, 26 acre site for a base camp. What it consists of, again, with the overall goal, as I mentioned, of the nonprofit of getting kids outdoors to really learn about nature and just spend time there and what that feels like and how that you know can change their perspective and development. So. During the week, this is typically approximately a two hour session for members of Endless Outdoors that come uh, in the afternoon, approximately four to 6 p.m. typically. And then on the weekends, there's other sessions given that kids aren't in school that can go different times of the day. And in terms of the improvements for this site so that kids can engage with nature and learn from instructors, you can see on the screen here the same site we just were looking at. That's Wooden Lane there on the south side. You can see uh, a parking lot here with 56 spaces for people to come and park. Most of the time, this will be drop-offs of parents of children, but for anybody that wanted to stay, and certainly for the, the counselors and instructors, this would be the place to come right in off Wooden Lane, and that's the sole access point for vehicles. And then you can see the other improvements. So you can see the trails outlined here. 
There's some existing trails there today that will be improved and some new trails that will be put in. Also, you can see uh, some different shapes here. The only uh, improvements here that show up in terms of vertical structures, because the whole point here is to have as very uh, minimal touch on the nature here as possible. But there'll be a welcome center and a bathroom, which are these two buildings here, just about approximately 3,200 square foot in total. And then back in here, you can see a main gathering point, which we've called the pavilion. Honestly, I don't know if that's an intuitive word. It's what we're using, but it's actually, as you can see over here, a very, very durable structure that will be put up. Um, we're still playing around with whether it will be tethered to the tree to trees in an environmentally safe way, or wh whether it will be have more uh, posts, if you will. But that's the largest of the structures, kind of the main one. And then the other pavilions that will just be smaller, but the same methodology will be used are these circles around here. Also, there'll be two dry detention basins on either side of the parking lot that the cursor is showing on the screen here. And two other items to mention, and then just be ready for any questions you might have. One is that there was a neighborhood meeting that we held back on July 21st, which was attended by about 20 folks from the neighborhood. And it was very positive. Um, I, I think the biggest takeaway was that the neighbors were happy to see that this large piece of land will stay almost entirely in its natural state other than what I just identified, which I think pe people really enjoyed. And then also we just wanted to say that in working with staff, we're, we're at a point where we can agree with all 27 stipulations offered by staff. And this is an exciting project for us. It's out of the box. And again, something I know that my family, my children really uh, look forward to being a part of, and we'd love to answer your questions. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Any questions from members of the commission? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any at this point, so we'll go to the public. Anyone in the audience want to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request? Raise your hand or come to the microphone. Chairman, we have one person in the in. I see some hands up. I need you to come to the microphone if you'd like to speak, please. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Give, us, give us your name and address. My name is Cecilia Robb. My address is 2824 Glen Rose Lane in Kansas City, Kansas. Uh -huh. Just that street branching off from Wood End Lane. I didn't go to the neighborhood meeting because I didn't know about it. <clears throat> but I've come to the commission many times to protest apartment buildings being proposed. And um, I'm coming to say I'm in favor of this because um, we have often wanted um, this property to be used for nature trails, which is what's, you know, coming up here. And my property is just on the east end of the um, Glen Rose Lane. Uh, we used to own 11 acres there. And um, I live in a geodesic dome. And I think that some of the traffic might increase but I just wanted to say that I think, um, since I'm also a teacher, I'm really in favor of something helping the children learn about nature because I grew up in the neighborhood. And even though I moved away and came back, I've been in that property as a child in the early 60s and um, the trails were there. It, was, it took forever to walk through there. But um, even as an adult, I've gone in there and looked around. And we do need to have, um, we have some concerns in our, um, on our street some people speed down that street, and I'm hoping that some of the um, people that are working in this group will um, help us help us improve the neighborhood and that area. And also, um, there's a lot of problems with um, <clears throat> people uh, shooting guns on the weekends, and it happens most of the time at night. But I've heard um, some other things during the day. So I'm really hoping for security to be improved and um, even surveillance cameras. So um, I'm encouraging you to do your homework, but I know you've uh, done a very good job. And, and also I'm an artist, so I appreciate anything that has to do with creativity and I look forward to seeing the pavilions fit in with the environment. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm gonna go to Julia Henley online. Ms. Henley, go ahead and give us your name and address, please. Uh, yeah, I'm at 2625 Hagman Street. 
And my concern was just to make sure that they didn't open up our street, which is a dead end. Um, we don't want the traffic flow through. Um, I was concerned about the facilities that will be used, but he did say there was gonna be a bathroom. Um, a question is no overnight stays. Is that correct? We'll get you some answers to those questions. So your question is whether or not there'll be a, any overnight stays permitted and whether or not there's any plans to open up, I'm sorry, what was the name of your street, Hagman? Correct. Uh -huh. Okay, and again, would you state your name for the record? You did not state your name. Oh, Julia Henley. Okay, were those your only questions, ma'am? Um, yes. All right, we'll try to get you some answers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna go back to the audience, please. Go ahead and step up to the microphone, sir, and give us your name and address, please. My name is George Higgins. My address is 2540 Espen Love Lane. <clears throat> My property abuts the north property of, or the north property line of, of, of the said site. And I did attend the neighborhood meeting and I was very encouraged about what they wanna do with this property. Uh, I've lived there 53 years and there's always something going on up there, whether it's a drug deal or dirt bikes or junk being dumped. And these people are committed to cleaning it up and taking care of it. And they did mention that they're working with a security company to create security for the property. So I'm really encouraged to see something happening on this piece of property, something positive. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak? If you're not seeing anyone else, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to Mr. Toy and get staff comment. I'm sorry, first of all, I'm gonna go back to Mr. Peterson, excuse me. Mr. Peterson, can you, uh, answer a couple of questions uh, from uh, that was from the, the comments from the public. One regarding any overnight stays being permitted on the premises and whether or not there's any uh, plans to open up Hagman Street to this development. Absolutely. Kurt Peterson here. Uh, neither Hagman nor Yates nor Oak Grove nor what is it Maddox, none of those streets that abut the subject property will be extended. We're keeping everything in its natural state. So no extension of Hagman. And then in terms of overnight stay, it's certainly in, you know, just hearing Nick's vision and everything, there's the primary goal here is not to have overnight stays. That's what I described, but we don't want to limit the possibility that there could be, you know, a one night overnight or something like that from time to time, which of course would be secure and done very professionally, but it's not the primary objective. And that would be a supervised situation in, in that instance. Is that correct? All for educational purposes. Exactly right. If, if, if that's done at all. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll now go to uh, Mr. Toy and get staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Curtis, I had a quick question related to a gating or security across the front. Will there be a, will there be a gate across the front entrance? Yes, there will be with a Knox box. Yes, so when we're done each day, the gate will be locked so people cannot come into our parking lot and a Knox box will be there so that in an emergency situation, uh, fire trucks, et cetera, could get in. Appreciate it, thank you. So it's, this is a pretty unique project that we actually have not seen before where a uh, private entity is coming in to really develop the site, a site and build nature trails and kind of have a youth camp setting. <clears throat> With that, staff recommends approval of the property subject to the stipulations outlined in the staff report. All right, thank you. Questions for staff? Commissioner Jones. No question, I was just wanting to make a motion. Okay, we're gonna need five. First one will be on the master plan amendment. Motion to approve the master plan amendment 2022-014, subject to staff stipulations and comments. Okay, motion to be made to approve the master plan, master plan amendment. Is there a second? Commissioner Miller, is that a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion for the master plan amendment? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of MPL 2022-014 
subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. Now I will entertain one on the change of zone. Commissioner Jones. Motion to approve change of zone case number 2022-023, subject to staff stipulations and comments. Thank you. Motion to approve change of zone made by Commissioner Jones. Is there a second? Mr. Pauley? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on change of zone? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of COZ 2022-023, subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. And now I'll need one on the special use permit. Commissioner Jones. Motion to approve special use permit case number 2022-073 subject to staff stipulations and comments. Thank you, motion to approve the special use permit made by Commissioner Jones. Uh, is that a second, Commissioner Miller? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the special use permit? Motion for approval. Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to up recommend approval of SP 2022-073, subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes seven in favor and none opposed. Now I will need one on the plat. Commissioner Jones. Motion to approve plat case number 2022-021, subject to staff. I'm sorry, you cut off at the very end, subject to staff stipulation and comments? I'm sorry, yes. Thank you. Is that a second, Commissioner Pauley? It is. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion for approval for the plat? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Burns? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to approve flat 2022-021, subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes seven in favor, none opposed. And finally, we'll need a motion for the plan review. Commissioner Jones. Motion to approve plan review case number 2022-027, staff stipulations. I, I apologize. Case number 2022-024, subject to staff stipulations and comments. Thank you very much. Motion uh, for approval made by Commissioner Jones. A second, Commissioner Miller. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion for approval on the plan review? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of PR 2022-024, <laughs> subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. These cases will be heard once again on August 25th at 7 p.m. before the Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Thank you all. Our next application is Special Use Permit SP 2021-069, United Truck Repair, Special Use Permit to operate an inspection and light maintenance facility for United Truck Repair at 451 South 14th Street. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, 
the stock report and attachments dated August 8, 2022. The application and other documents, plans, pictures, and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandotte Echo, and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Mr. Chairman, this case was remanded back from the Board of Commissioners on July 28th. Um, you may want to have Mr. Toy explain to the commission why it was remanded. All right, thank you. We'll go to Mr. Toy, please, for an explanation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so on July 28th, the Board of Commissioners remanded this back by actually specifically Mc Commissioner McKiernan to the Planning Commission so the applicant could have 30 days to submit new plan or submit plans uh, for the petition. And regardless of the state or what happens in those 30 days, it'll be back before you on September 12th. Regardless if there's plans or no plans submitted, this the last 30 days that they have for this petition. Okay, and, and Mr. Toy, just for clarification, this was recommended for denial by the Planning Commission last month. Is that correct? And it was sent back correct. by the Board of Commissioners for an additional 30 days. Yes, that is correct. All right, thank you. Uh, is the applicant in the audience tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, Chairman. Okay, and Representative so is. Okay, do we need to go to the applicant or do we, are we looking for a 30 day hold? Okay, Janet is saying yes. So, uh, Mr. Singh Pada, do you want to come to the microphone, please? And just one moment. Good day, Will Anderson, BHC for the applicant, um, United Truck Repair. Um, we have already submitted additional stuff straight after. I'd say um, the Board of Commissioners agreed to send it back. Um, and my understanding from the document so far is the planning department will meet with us to discuss the, uh, the additional information that's been submitted. Okay, so Mr. Anderson, the motion for denial from the Planning Commission last month got the attention of the applicant and we're starting to move forward, is that correct? They've spent quite a bit of money trying to catch up, yes. Okay, all right, so and so your request tonight is for a 30-day holdover, correct? Correct. Okay, and Janet, what would that meeting date be if that were to be approved? That date is September the 12th, Mr. Chair. September 12th, okay, we'll go to Commissioner Connolly for a question. I got a question for Patrick. Uh, is that passed? Because we've already given up the 90 days uh, well, well, can we still give some additional 30 days, Patrick? Yes, we can give up to 120. That's the max. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Hey, I'm going to go ahead and open this up to the public just in case somebody came tonight. Is there anyone in the audience that wanted to speak in favor of or in opposition to this application? Please raise your hand or come to the microphone. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Toy, do you have any final comments from the staff perspective? The applicant has until August 23rd to submit plans. Therefore, we can have revisions if necessary. <clears throat> and that is it. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for staff? Seeing none, I will stand for a motion. Commissioner Ernst. In deference to Commissioner McKiernan, and knowing this will be the last swing at it, I would move for a 30-day holdover. Thank you. Motion is for a 30-day holdover made by Commissioner Ernst. Is that a second, Commissioner Miller? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion for 30-day holdover? Commissioner Connolly. You're still muted, sir. Yeah, I just want the applicant to know that they need to provide the information that's needed for staff. And I mean, we don't want to see any pictures of where they just passed. They need to do certain areas large enough to where we can see the significant change in what they've done. done. Um, and, and like I said, this is the last 30 days. Thank you. I agree with you, Commissioner Connolly. Thank you. Any further discussion? 
on the motion for holdover. Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Foley? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, that motion to hold over this application until the September 12, 2022 City Planning Commission meeting for additional plans and information to be submitted to staff for review. Passes seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. Our next application is special use permit SP 2022-037, Daniel Jansen with me and my uncle LLC. Special use permit for storage for landscaping business inside a 2,000 square foot outbuilding at 230 South 65th Street. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022, the application and other documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the one.echo and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Thank you. Mr. Jansen, are you in the audience? Uh, my name is Tom Stiebel. I office at 509 Armstrong in Kansas City, Kansas, 66103. 66101, I'm sorry. I'm here on behalf of the applicant and then requesting that the commission follow the staff recommendation and approve a special use permit 2022-037. The applicant is committed to fulfilling the planning department guidelines by request a waiver or a deviation from the guidelines the staff identified as needing an approved deviation as listed on page 15 of the staff report. There's really two areas. One is pedestrian uh, connections, and then the other is building materials. On um, pedestrian connections, we request the deviation due to the low volume of pedestrian traffic, which is usually only 10 to 12 cars entering the parking lot each day during the eight hours that the skate park operates. Uh, nearly all are students of the skate park school, and there's no significant tra public traffic like there might be at an office park or a medical building. Uh, regarding the building materials, this is an existing building that has been there for about 50 years. Um, if you look at the photos on page 22, um, which were taken from the streets, both Speaker Road and 65th Street, the building is barely visible through traffic passing the site. The building will be further screened by the installation of the landscaping that's shown on the landscaping plan that's on pages 24 and 25. Um, so we ask that you recognize that staff has that from time to time deviations from the guidelines may be necessary. Thank you for considering our request. And we again ask approval for this special permit. I'm gonna, I'm sorry, sir. I'm gonna have to ask you to back up to the first deviations while I was pulling up the case, you were going through it so fast, which what, what's the other one on the parking that you're asking for a deviation on and what type of deviation are you asking for? Well, they, um, they asked for, um, the deviation on page 15 is um, lack of uh, curbing or a raised uh, uh, traffic calming device, which could actually be installed. Um, if you look at the plan on page um, 25, you can see that there's a designated sidewalk crossing the parking lot there in the middle into the door entry, and that could be a raised uh, sidewalk that would serve a traffic, pa uh, traffic calming purpose. Um, the building itself is a metal building um, that has been there for a long time. Uh, the cost of providing a, well, I think we're talking about not only that metal building, but the big one. Uh, the cost of providing um, that really is, is, is fairly prohibitive um, due to the income that the property can generate. We had discussions with staff about it and staff um, at, recommended then that we ask for this deviation from the um, from this from the requirements of uh, putting masonry on the outside of the building. Okay, 
questions from the staff. I'm assuming questions from the commission. Commissioner Jones. Yes, what is the long term uh, plan for storage? Since this is to be a temporary, a temporary use of this, this property. A, uh, this is a this is a two year temporary application that cannot be renewed. Uh, this, the small outbuilding, there's two leases on that property, the skate park in the big building, and then the small building um, has a landscaping business that was actually has been there before the current owner bought the property. Um, and um, they were used some of that parking space outside for storage. The landscaping business um, is a retail business. There's no trucks entering the site. What happens there is that they have their prop, their uh, products delivered to the, where they're going to do the work and, and the, it's when they have leftover material from a job that they bring it in they bring it in usually in the back of a pickup truck so there's no big um, um, there's no large trucks entering the property there commissioner jones did that answer your question or are you are you getting at the mess that we see in these photos yeah, so that being said, the petitioner is aware that they need a long-term plan. The, the applicant is aware that this is a, going to be a two-year lease that um, will end at the end of two years, yes. And he's going to have to find some other uh, purpose for that structure. Okay, thank you. Other questions? I guess I, I have a couple. As far as and looking at the photographs that we're seeing of the structure, there's there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of uh, mess going on as far as storage. There's things piled up on the sides. What is that all going to remain? The landscape, well, I guess, the landscaping material storage area is that all going to continue to to stay the way that it is. Well, the landscaping storage is a, is the reason why they're re request the outside storage is the reason why they're requesting this special use permit. So there is going to be some outside storage. Um, well, it looks like they're already doing it. So what I mean, are you requesting to continue to do it, or are we looking at less, or what are we looking? I mean, it's already there. Well, we're we're trying to bring this property into conformance with the rules. Um, yes, it is all. It is. It is there. It was there before this person purchased the property. And what we have tried to do is, is help him get to where he is in compliance with the rules, understanding that his lease is going to have to terminate at the end of this period of time. Okay, maybe I can get more clarity when I talk to staff. I feel like you're you stop short on all your answers with me, so I'm just going to wait and see if I can get that from the staff. So I'm going to move on. Any other questions for the applicants, representative? Seeing none, we'll go to the audience. Anyone in the audience want to speak to, uh, in favor of, or in opposition to this request? Please raise your hand or come to the microphone. Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to Mr. Toy and we'll get his comment. Thank you, Mr. Maybe. Chairman. So to answer a question, you see on the screen right now, you kind of see stuff that's in kind of a, a way, um, a nice way of saying it. For example, the diesel tank has to be removed actually in nine days. So it says in the stock report that- I can't hear. Has... I can't hear. Yeah. Can you Byron, hear me now, we're, Commissioner we're, Connolly? We're, we're having a really hard time with your microphone, uh, Byron, I got to tell you. Okay. Is that is this is this better? Marginally. Marginally. Okay. Yeah. Not. No. Actually, it's not. You're you're cutting in, and it's it's not good. Okay. So the applicant's diesel tank that you see in the picture in the top right. Yes. Has has to be removed by August seventeenth. That's one thing that has to be cleaned up on the site. <clears throat> in general. The landscaping materials and equipment that's stored within that fenced within this fenced area here has to be in an orderly manner. It cannot be disheveled into all of the place. So it cannot look the way it does right now. It cannot, it cannot look the way it does right now. That is correct. Behind this, behind this enclosure will be a privacy fence because you cannot see it from public view, which you will be able to see clearly if you were driving down 65th Street. 
So this will be a privacy fence that will be erected to screen anything within this enclosure. There's already a natural buffer with trees to the west, to the north, but this has to be screened from public view. <clears throat> also, as the applicant said, this is for two years and two years only. So this cannot come back for renewal, asking for an additional time to find it another location. It's within two years that this use is, is over. And then possibly the skate park could expand. <clears throat> the skate park can expand possibly this area or further out in the parking lot to the, to the east. Um, but this use specifically will end after two years. The staff recommends approval. What about the deviations asked for by the applicant? So <clears throat> the skate park has already come through with the rest with their special use permit. Right. So this solely is for the existing shed. So given the fact that this is temporary in nature and the shed may not be there after two years, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to put the expense of putting in masonry materials when the shed may be gone. Um, to, a, to a better and higher use. What that use is, we do not know yet, but to put in the, to put in the money to make, that, to make those upgrades when in fact the use itself is only there for two years doesn't make a ton of sense. So staff is accepting of the deviation as requested by the applicant. Okay, Commissioner Connolly, you have a question? Do we have any violation on this property prior? Do we have any prior violations? Can so you hear there's me? no, yes, I can hear you, Commissioner. So there are five code enforcement violations for overgrown vegetation, junk on the property from 2006 to 2017. These are previous owners. But other than that, there's, no, there's nothing related to noise or disturbance or any bill increment or code inspection cases. All right, thank you. Were those notice of violations cleared? It, ap it appears that, looking at the staff report, that only one citation was later rescinded after it was discovered the overgrown vegetation was in the public right of way, not on the subject property. So all of them are closed. Okay. The remaining four are closed. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Ernst? This may be more an observation but I distinctly remember when we talked about the skate park and changing this and that, that the change from R1 to commercial came up in that all manner of things might end up here. And I can't help but think we're seeing the result of that. This is all manner of things in my opinion. That's it. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments for staff? Okay, seeing none, I will stand for a motion. Commissioner Connolly? You're muted, Commissioner Connolly. I make a motion to approve for one year with staff stipulations. Motion is for one year. And does that include the deviations requested by the applicant? Yes. The motion is for approval for one year, including the deviations requested by the applicant. Is there a second? Commissioner Ernst? I'll second that for him. All right, thank you. Motion is uh, for one year, moved and seconded. Is there a discussion on the motion for approval? Commissioner Miller? Um, I just had a question for staff on that because since, am I misremembering, but since that was for two years and it was not able to be renewed, if, it, if we make the motion for one year, are we able to renew it for another year when that point comes? You could for one more year. That would fulfill its two-year 
the two-year term limit. Is the rationale, Commissioner Connolly, for one year to just see how we're doing? Correct. Okay. Any further discussion? Motion is for one year. Seeing none, roll call, please. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Holly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of SP 2022-037 for one year, subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes, and including the deviations, passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. This will be heard once again on August 25th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Our next application is special use permit SP 2022-067, Brian Glazer, special use permit to operate a short-term rental at 733 Ohio Avenue. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022, the application of their documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandotte Echo and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Is it Glaser or Glasser? Glasser. Glasser. Uh, okay, go ahead and give us your, you already did, but go ahead and give us your name and address, please, for the record. Tell us what you'd like to do here. Yeah, my name is Brian Glasser. I represent uh, AKC Co Investments LLC. Um, currently officed over at 730 Minnesota Ave here in Kansas City, Kansas. Um, I'm applying for a special use permit for a short term rental at 733 Ohio. Um, Everything that the staff has asked me to do, uh, I've completed. Um, this is not our first special use permit. We've, uh, we've done them before and had them approved as well um, and have had no issues here in the city um, doing what we do and look forward to you know, running another one. All right, thank you. And you do not live on site, is that correct? Sorry, could you repeat that, sir? You do not live on site, correct? I do not live on site at this one, no. All right, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing none, anyone in the audience want to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request, please raise your hand or come to the microphone. I'm seeing none, so we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to uh, Mr. Toy, get his staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this special instrument uh, will be approved for, or recommended for approval by staff for one year because the uh, applicants not live within the residence. With that, staff recommends approval. All right, thank you. Any questions for staff? The recommendation is for a one-year approval. Seeing none, I'll stand for a motion. Commissioner Jones? Motion to approve the petitioner's request subject to staff stipulations and comments. Thank you. Motion is for approval by Commissioner Jones. Is that a second, Commissioner Connolly? Yes, that's the second. Thank you. Moved and seconded for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Holly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Connolly? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of SP 2022-067 for one year, subject to the conditions in the staff report, passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. This will be heard once again, August 20, I'm sorry, August 25th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Our next application is special use permit application SP 2022-068. Special use permit for a short-term rental at 3008 South 9th Street. 
Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022, the application of their documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandot Echo and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. 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 Thank you. Yes, Ms. Uh, is it Bellardi? Yes. Got you queued up, ready to speak. If you would, please give us your name and address and tell us what you'd like to do. Sure. My name is Sarah Bellardi, and I'm at 3008 South 9th Street, Kansas City, Kansas. Um, my husband and I bought this property earlier this year, and we are applying for a short-term rental permit. We are from out of state, um, but we have family in the area, and we visit our nephews and family there frequently. We plan to use this as a vacation home and rent it out as a short-term rental when we are not there. We spent the summer there with family renovating the property and completing the requirements needed. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, we'll go to the audience. Anyone in the audience want to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request, please raise your hand or come to the microphone if you're in the audience. We have one person in the audience. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and give us please your name and address. Yes, my name is Leslie Guthrie and my address is 2933 South 9th Street, Kansas City, Kansas. Um, there was a mention earlier that property owners got notifications. We live three houses down and I don't recall receiving any notification. I'm just like to put that on record, but also generally speaking, I am in opposition of this. I don't think that the residents in our area need short-term rentals. There are plenty of hotels and things like that in the surrounding area already. What we need is affordable housing. So turning this into an Airbnb is not going to help contribute to positive things in our neighborhood. And that's what I'd like to see. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to uh, Mr. Toy, get staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, staff understands the, uh, the uh, individual that spoke in opposition to this as far as need for affordable housing, specifically in Rosedale, um, which is an ongoing issue that we have seen uh, lately with uh, kind of the number of Airbnbs that we've seen come through our, our office. Um, this is only for one year because the applicant does not reside on the property, does not live on the property. Um, so this can be reviewed again to see if this is a, essentially a viable use uh, in one year, but with that staff recommends approval. Thank you. Questions for staff? Commissioner Ward. Okay, Commissioner Ward, go ahead. Uh, have there been any issues with the property uh, that they've so far or, or past issues? There have been some issues. There's been some issues with previous with the previous owner, but not these owners specifically, since they've taken ownership of the property. Are there any other rental properties like this in the area itself, within the few block radius, or this, is this the only one for? Or do you know? I should say. I mean, related to the Airbnb short-term rental VRBO, this is the only one that we've had come up in this immediate area. But there may be rental property, but I would not know okay. off the top of my head. Mr. Jones, question? But just to be sure, um, we don't have, Byron, any rules or regulations right now in place where there's a limitation on the number of Airbnb properties within a certain mile radius. No, there's, no, there's not an ordinance that we've created or developed that whether it's radius or radius around specific area or just a, if you want to call it a quota number of units or airbnbs short-term rentals that are allowed within a geographic geog geographic boundary excuse me uh no there's nothing we have created for that okay thank you other questions for staff seeing none i'll stand for a motion Mr. Jones. 
Motion to approve the petitioner's request for one year subject to staff stipulations and comments. Thank you. Motion for approval made by Commissioner Jones. Is that a second, Commissioner Connolly? Correct. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion for approval? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Nay. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of SB 2022-068 for one year, subject to the conditions and the staff report, passes six in favor and one opposed. Thank you. This will be heard once again, August 25th, 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you very much. Our next application is special use permit SP 2022-069. G and J Entertainment, special use permit for live entertainment in conjunction with an existing drinking establishment at 4929 State Avenue. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022. The application, other documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file. The notice in the Wyandotte Echo and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. No. Thank you. Okay, sir, if you would please go ahead and give us your name and address, please, and tell us what you'd like to do here. Yes, my name is Jesus Gonzalez. I'm the owner of the G and J Entertainment. The address is 4929 State Avenue, Kansas City, Kansas. I need a translator. Hi, my name is Romero. Um, we're looking to. I, I need your I need your name and address too, please. Romero Rosales, uh, 1405 Massachusetts Street, Lawrence, Kansas. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, we're looking for an entertainment license to provide uh, live music uh, every once in a while at the current location, 4929 State Avenue. And is that something that's done there currently now? I'm sorry? Is that something that's currently done there now? Yes. You already have, you have current we, live entertainment? We were doing it and then uh, we got uh, shut down, said that we needed this uh, entertainment license. So okay. this is why we're here now. Okay, great. Thank you. Questions for the applicant. What's the, what's the name of the business? Mr. Ward. Yes. Sorry. Uh, the business is Islas VP sports bar. Okay. Uh, we serve food and just do karaoke and whatnot, but we'd like to bring some live music every once in a while. Okay, Commissioner Connolly. Yeah, I guess my question was, is this live music going to be indoor or outdoors? It'll be indoor. All right, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to the audience. Anyone tonight want to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request? Please come to the microphone if you're in the commission chambers or raise your hand online. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to Mr. Toy, get staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the live entertainment itself must cease, all operation must cease by 1 a.m. Uh, also, really some of the typical standards, things we have in the report, uh, ID scanners required. Um, also, uh, doors must be closed, windows must be closed as far as live uh, music cannot be amplified outside uh, camping lighting outside if there's a patio um, that has to be all kept inside uh, with that staff recommends approval for two years thank you questions for staff mr jones 
Byron, we don't request different hours for the Monday through Friday. I see it's 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. daily, including weekdays. I mean, considering, excuse me, Commissioner, <clears throat> considering it is along a commercial corridor and there's commercial all around this, as opposed to if there's residents immediately abutting it, we probably would restrict the hours during the weekday. But the, ironically, the neighborhood resource center is directly to, behind it to the south. And there are uh, commercial establishments on either side of this. So again, a 1 a.m. closing time during the weekday, not completely out of character. Okay, thank you. Other questions for the staff? Seeing none, I will stand for a motion. Mr. Connolly? Yeah, I make a motion to approve. I'm trying to find the... <laughs> Case number is SP 2022-069. Is that what you're looking for? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I make a motion to approve SP 2022-069 with staff stipulations. All right, thank you. Is that a second, Commissioner Miller? Yes. Thank you. The moved and seconded for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Holly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of SP 2022-069 for two years, subject to the conditions in the staff report passes seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you, gentlemen. This will be heard once again on August 25th at 7 p.m. in the same place uh, before the Board of County Commissioners. Good luck. Thank you. Our next application is special use permit SP 2022-072, Jane Sullivan, special use permit for a used car dealership at 1401 Merriam Lane. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case, the city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated August 8, 2022, the application and other documents, plans, pictures, and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file the notice in the Wyandotte Echo and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. No. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, go ahead and please give us your name and address and tell us about this project. Uh, good evening, commission members. I'm Jim Sullivan with Sullivan Palmer Architects, 8621 Johnson Drive in Merriam, Kansas. And I'd just like to go through a, a few of the um, items on this uh, proposal from um, the property owner and just uh, hand it off back to, to Baja to talk about other things that some of which hopefully I had forgotten. <laughs> but um, uh, the property is about uh, 1.9 acres. Uh, the proposal includes redevelopment and reinvigoration of the southwest approximately half of that property. Um, it's backed by uh, Turkey Creek um, so we have a definite uh, uh, rear property. The property was very much overgrown and the property owner has spent quite a bit of time uh, cleaning up the property, getting rid of brush, um, re, uh, uh, repairing and uh, painting the existing 3,000 square foot existing building on the property. Uh, the, the building is masonry. Uh, it's in relatively good shape now with uh, some of the time and effort that they spent uh, redoing that. Uh, the, the proposal includes the, the use of car sales and repair. Um, the existing 3,000 square foot building would be for offices, for their business, and a showroom uh, at the south portion of the, of the building. There would be a new 1,200 square foot um, 
building uh, located on the property as well uh, that uh, would be uh, compliant with the C3 uh, zoning regulations, uh, full for foresighted architecture uh, in compliance with um, uh, long-term materials and that sort of thing. Uh, one of the deviations that we have proposed is to uh, basically provide a, a new building that looks like a new building and have the existing building look like what it is. Uh, it is a the existing building is masonry. Uh, it has been repaired and repainted and such. It's really in, in relatively good shape at this point. And we can't see um, either to make our new building look like a 1960s building like the other building on the property or vice versa. So we'd like to propose that deviation to you. Um, the remainder of the, the developed site uh, has a, a double entrance um, that was put in fairly recently, we believe. Uh, we'd like to keep that. We're gonna be obviously putting in landscaping and repairing the, and adding to the, the asphalt parking lots and such, just a general uh, compliance that, uh, that you and staff have recommended to us. So uh, that's, that's in a nutshell what we propose. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Baha Hamel. I'm the general contractor. I'll be working with uh, Jim Sullivan and the owner. And uh, all we try to do is to uh, actually make this property flourish the whole area. Uh, it's on, uh, it is on an intersection as well as uh, uh, that area, it's completely dead. Uh, if you drive by it, you don't see many businesses. And I think if we uh, make that work, uh, we'll get the whole area actually uh, doing really well. We'll, well. we'll attract more businesses coming in there. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed that <clears throat> we don't have any, we have a septic tank there in that property and uh, right at the corner, there is the main sewer. And I propose and talk to uh, some of the owners in the area, if we can, with the help of them and the city, we can have a sewer line goes in, in between and that will attract even more businesses. So, I mean, that's what we'd like to do. And uh, hopefully with your guidance, we uh, will come to an agreement. Right. Thank you. And sir, I need your address, please, for the record. I beg your pardon? I need your address, please, for the record. You gave us your name, but not your address. Yes, uh, 11613 Oakmont Street, Overland Park, Kansas. Thank you very much. Any questions for the applicant's representatives? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to the audience. Anyone in the audience, whether it be in the chambers or online, Want to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request, please raise your hand or come to the microphone. We do have one person in the chambers. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Give us your name, please, and address. Sure, Dave Kaufman, uh, 5830 Bell Road, Shawnee, Kansas. Um, I do own two properties within 200 feet of their proposed uh, investment property there, um, 1328 Merriam Lane uh, and also 1330 Merriam Lane. I am in full support. Um, that area really can use an improvement. Um, they're looking to really um, put some financial resources into that area. And I think it would be uh, good for the community there. But I am in favor. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to uh, Mr. Toy and get staff comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> staff would like to kind of Note that the southern boundary of the property, here you see the split zoning, that's C3 and M2. They'll have to come back for a change of zone to remove that split zoning. You kind of want to have one cohesive parcel with one, the same zoning, so it makes sense. <clears throat> so they'll come back to rezone that. Also, uh, they'll be putting a trail in along Turkey Creek to comply with the Selwalk and Trails Master Plan. Um, staff recommends approval. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Commissioner Ernst. Byron, I believe that building is painted currently. 
I believe that is correct. It's more like an off-white cream color. I thought we kind of had a thing against painting brick as opposed to taking it back to the natural. If it's cinder block, we would probably leave it. But if it's true masonry, brick, or brick veneer, um, we we would ask for it to be sandblasted and removed. Um, the deviation would be at your discretion whether or not you wanted them to do that or not. Hey, here. Byron, could you go again? Yes, I, I can repeat that. The typically in the code where it says <clears throat> if there's masonry on the on the if there's masonry on the on the facade and it's painted, that the paint is removed, typically by sandblasting or some other type of way to do it. <clears throat> if the applicant does not want to do that, they can ask for a deviation, which that's what they're asking to keep the uh, building, the existing building as is by keeping it painted. That is your that is your discretion whether or not to grant that bear, that deviation. I think that answers my question. Yes, it is brick. Has been for a really long time. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay, seeing none, I will stand for a motion. Um, Mr. Chairman, the uh, the applicant would like to uh, speak. Okay, typically, all right, go, is it something quick that we can address? Because, go ahead. It's indicated, yes. Just, right. just want to touch on the, uh, the trail that's proposed uh, along Merriam Lane that's part of the, the Johnson County or the- Sidewalks the, and Trails Master Plan. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, obviously, we we have we haven't seen any proposal on that trail. We uh, there was a comment on the staff report about the possibility of of the owner contributing to this trail. Um, we really know very little about it, and and we are not in agreement to provide the trail. Um, if there was a question on that, there wasn't. So I. Okay, I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm going to go back to the commission. So, questions from the commission, Commissioner Connolly. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I, I, I guess what he said. I mean, he's not in agreement with what, what staff is recommending. Is that what he's saying? With regard to the trail that he, trail, may not, right. they, they don't have enough information on. Yes, I mean, at, at the. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. <laughs> So at this point, any other questions from the commission for staff? Okay, if saying that, I'll stand for a motion. Go ahead, Commissioner Connolly. You're muted, Commissioner Connolly. I make a motion for hold over for 30 days so staff and the petitioner can come to some type of an agreement on the requirements of the trail and have a clear understanding and also the deviation of the bricks. Um, they need to come to some type of an agreement. So I make a motion to hold it over for 30 days. A motion to hold over for 30 days made, made by Commissioner Conley to address the trail system as well as the exterior uh, brick. Any, I'm sorry, is that a second, Commissioner Ernst? Yes, sir. It's been seconded by Commissioner Ernst. Any discussion on the motion for a 30 day holdover to September 12th? Is that correct, Janet? That's correct, sir. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Polly? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to hold over SP 2022 072 
until the September 12th meeting for the staff and the applicant to come to an agreement on the two requested deviations passes, seven in favor and none opposed. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before our, I call our last item, uh, Alyssa, can I get you to um, show your video so that I can introduce you to the Planning Commission? I'd like to introduce you to our new long range planner, Alyssa Marcy. Uh, she has taken Kim Portia's place and she's on the meeting tonight because we're getting ready to uh, do consideration of the plans that we discussed last month. And also we have Anthony Gallo uh, with us. So I'm gonna go ahead and call them. And Anthony, I have promoted you and made you a co-host so you can share your screen. So the three plans that we're gonna consider for approval by resolution tonight are the Northeast Kansas City, Kansas Heritage Trail Plan, the Merriam Connected Corridor Plan, and the GoDOT Countywide Strategic Mobility Plan. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Um, Gallo is going to present all three of these at the same time, and then we will vote on them separately. All right, thank you. Before we go to that, Commissioner Connolly, your hand was up. Did, did, you, did you have a question or a comment? I'll save it for the end, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, no problem, thank you. Okay, Mr. Gallo, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, thank you members of the commission. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Um, again, I, my name is Anthony Gallo. I'm a member of the consultant team for the GoDOT Strategic Mobility Plan and also being incorporated by reference tonight, um, the Northeast KCK Heritage Trail Plan and the Merriam Connected Corridor Plan. All three plans were presented to the Planning Commission and Board of Commissioners last month. Comments from staff and stakeholders have been received and incorporated into the final plans. These plans are summarized in this presentation tonight are intending to be improved by this commission uh, and adopted by the Board of Commissioners through three individual resolutions. All three plans are funded by a MARC uh, Planning Sustainable Places grant um, through three individual grants with additional funding from the UG and partner cities where applicable. Uh, GoDOT, which is a countywide plan, is meant to serve as a consolidated unified location for all previous and ongoing planning efforts in the county. So as such, incorporating the other two plans by reference, including any applicable recommendations and action items. Uh, again, I'm presenting on behalf of all three project teams and the Department of Planning and Urban Design for consolidation purposes. So I'll start with the Northeast KCK Heritage Trail Plan. Uh, I wanna recognize the project team led by Groundwork NRG and I'm presenting on their behalf. The plan has um, four main pillars. One, history, capturing the rich history of the Northeast KCK area with memorialization and, preser er, and preservation. Mobility, uh, connecting residents and visitors by means of all modes, uh, all ages and all abilities. Environment, creating, enhancing and restoring green space to improve quality of life and address needed stormwater issues. And economic development, uh, the idea of development without displacement, providing shopping areas and essential services while supporting neighborhood preservation and growth and stimulating equitable community investment. This plan in particular was defined by its community-based participatory research effort. There was a significant amount of effort spent out in the community, listening and learning, finding the criteria for what needed to go in the plan and ultimately settling on a preferred alignment and set of recommendations. So the preferred trail route is broken up into three segments. Um, they're in different colors on this map here. The town trail is in gold. It runs from 10th uh, to the northeast up to Quindaro Town Site. It utilizes some existing trails along Jersey Creek and strengthens the connections between the neighborhood and the town site. The Hart Trail in red is a loop between Northeast KCK and downtown. It's centered on Sumner Academy and connecting several parks and schools. It focuses on residential and commercial reinvestment. And then the River Trail in blue uh, is a segment from Call Point up to 10th Street. It again utilizes some existing trails along Jersey Creek improves that connection between Jersey Creek and Call Point and connects major green spaces. There are specific focus areas in the plan. There, those are highlighted on the map in the one to four boxes, uh, as well as potential connections or future expansions of the trail in dashed lines. 
few other notes from this plan. Um, again, there's an equitable development scorecard for residents and stakeholders to provide feedback on proposed development project through the lens of community-defined principles outlined in the plan. It's intended to be a tool for the land bank, Groundwork NRG, Northeast KCK residents, and other stakeholders to assess larger development projects. Uh, those would be projects with 10 or more dwellings or 10,000 square feet or more commercial, industrial, or office space. It's got branding and signage that was developed for memorialization to give the trail that distinct placemaking. There's an online platform for folks to take a virtual tour and learn more about the history of the area. Uh, and then ultimately the plan concludes with recommended phasing, understanding that there are funding constraints. There are four phases recommended in the plan, costs provided for each, uh, and grant, grant and partnership opportunities provided. And I'll take questions at the end on, on all three, and I believe we have some staff as well. So the second plan uh, being presented here is the Merriam Connected Corridor Plan. I wanna recognize the project team here as well, led by Olson. Again, I'm presenting on their behalf and behalf of the planning and urban design team. Uh, project was done in collaboration with the cities of Mission, Overland Park and Merriam. Many of the plan recommendations are actually focused outside of the UG as this plan builds upon the UG's uh, Southwest Boulevard Merriam Lane planning efforts which were done previously. You can see on this map above several of the recommendations for the corridor, for the, the Marion Lane corridor within the UG. Uh, as you all are aware, there's already a two lane section with bike lanes. Um, there are some proposed redevelopments, trails and trail connections and monuments within the UG portion of the Marion Lane corridor uh, and that Turkey Creek Trail um, that was just mentioned a few moments ago. Um, so within the UG, again, perhaps the most notable priority project, which is also noted in the GoDOT plan, is the expansion of the Turkey Creek Trail, um, connecting the trail uh, and, and, and providing a comprehensive bicycle network with connections to new north-south routes, so well sidewalk connections to adjacent neighborhoods, mixed-use redevelopment at, at key sites, transit improvements, um, recommendations for microtransit and a migration to uh, a, a longer term fixed route transit along the corridor, um, uh, gateway monuments, and then um, the last point, multi-benefit green infrastructure, combining stormwater management with other infrastructures such as trails. Um, that's also noted in the Northeast KCK Heritage Trail Plan. That is a countywide recommendation within the GoDOT plan. And again, we'll take questions at the end. So finally, the, the GoDOT Strategic Mobility Plan, which incorporates the two previous plans by reference. Again, GoDOT is the branded name for a countywide mobility plan and a transit oriented development or TOD strategy. It's a segue into the citywide master plan. Uh, it will essentially serve as the transportation element for the citywide master plan update. It's aiming to set up a shared vision of the future for transportation in across the entire county, including the independent cities. It's aiming to set the stage to define goals to move toward that said shared vision and establish metrics to track progress along the way. I want to emphasize the coordinated element of this plan. It's been coordinated across various UG departments, across stakeholders across the county, um, notably including the, the independent cities of Bonner Springs, Edwardsville, and Lake Quivira. Uh, it represents a paradigm shift, focus on all modes. Um, again, it's it's going to serve as the transportation element of the citywide master plan and essentially the, is the implementation element of the county's complete street ordinance. Uh, and it's built upon the back. Uh, it, it serves as a single unified location to, to find transportation policy and system plans. It's built on the back of many previous plans. Um, it, it's really the culmination of amalgamate, an amalgamation of, of dozens of previous planning efforts, including two that we just heard from. Um, so corridor plans, unconstrained visions for advancing a particular corridor like State Avenue or K32, area plans, Armourdale being the most recent one that's been adopted, independent city plans, several recent efforts from Bonner Springs and Edwardsville, um, modal plans, so there's a, a sidewalk and trails master plan element that's being updated, um, smart moves, which is the, the entire KC region's transit plan um, is incorporated in here, uh, Mark's climate action plan, uh, the UG complete streets ordinance, and then this will all serve as a segue into the upcoming citywide master plan update. So um, I'll reiterate again the um, foundations report that we put out last year on the project website that's an appendix to the GoDOT plan. Uh, this was an initial state of play effort to assess mobility across the county, um, what challenges and opportunities exist. 
a few key points um, for context that I think really set the stage for our strategy and downstream recommendations and actions. So in terms of regional context and our people, um, it, looking at Wyandotte County and KCK as part of the larger KC region, we're aware that uh, the county is more diverse, less wealthy, has a lot of geographically dispersed job centers, which impact mobility, and there are a lot of natural and man-made barriers of rails, streams, rivers, uh, highways. From a mobility standpoint, several key metrics, 5,500 households without access to a car, 4,000 crashes a year, including 50 bike ped crashes a year and 14 deaths since 2016. Most transit routes running 60 minute headways or longer, meaning a bus comes only once an hour or, or less. Uh, lack of sidewalks uh, or poor conditions for sidewalks that do exist and a few greenway and trail options currently. All of that gets to a quantitative metric that we've developed called access to opportunity, which is the number of jobs or key destinations you can get to in 30 minutes from where you live. So the number of schools, healthcare, education, parks, jobs. Um, and within Wyandotte County, if you do not own a car, this metric is very poor. Um, this isn't just a measure of, of transit accessibility. This is accounting for sidewalks, trails, and roads that you can safely bike on, as well as job density and amenities such as grocery stores. So it's accounting for both transportation and land use. That's why you see some differences with Johnson County. Um, essentially, you know, it was within Wyandotte County, the state of play today is that without access to a car, there are um, the, the number of jobs and destinations that you can get to is pretty limited, except in the far eastern portion. So it's a measure of both transportation and land use. This will be used in the citywide master plan as a metric to measure how land use and transportation investments together um, can, can, change, uh, can change access to jobs and destinations. Another key metric that we want to mention is excess capacity. This is pretty unique to Wyandotte County. The idea that you have a lot of roadways in the county that are were built to carry many more cars than they actually do today. Um, that has some negative impacts, most notably on, on maintenance and safety, um, but also offers opportunities for things like retrofitting. So the challenges and opportunities that were identified of the course of the plan set the stage for the GoDOT plans, five big ideas, like the centerpiece of the mobility strategy, all recommendations and actions are oriented around one or more of these. So the first one is safety first, uh, eliminating traffic deaths and protecting our residents, recommending to move forward with a vision zero action plan. Uh, this will go from groundwork research that public works and planning department have done into action for uh, downstream funding and implementation. There's a lot of infrastructure bill funding for implementing safety projects um, that the county is very well positioned for. Street Design 101, being brilliant at the basics, recognizing the streets are building blocks of our community. This is essentially the implementation of the county's complete streets ordinance. We want to at least consider and open up the design criteria for all modes and abilities. Um, the plan does provide an update to the county's recommended street cross sections. Next level transit, this is really carrying forward recommendations from previous transit planning efforts, focusing uh, those transit investments for fast and frequent service along the seventh rainbow corridors and along State Avenue, uh, and then a supporting network of transit and mobility options elsewhere. So that leads to the next big idea, prioritizing connections that goes hand in hand with the above, uh, providing those first mile and last mile connections to transit, most notably bike and pet infrastructure, and with that, um, the sidewalk and trails master plan, which was last um, done in 2012, has been updated as part of this plan. Uh, does recognize uh, several transformational trail corridors, including the Turkey Creek Trail, the Northeast KCK Heritage Trail, uh, trail along K32 out to Bonner Springs and Edwardsville, uh, and a Jersey Creek City Park Trail. Um, and then finally, investing in opportunity corridors. This is uh, going to serve as a segue to the citywide master plan update, connecting land use and transportation. Um, this is a recommendation to concentrate future growth in a sustainable way around transit-oriented and trail-oriented corridors. So again, State Avenue and 7th and Rainbow, as well as the K32 Kansas Avenue corridors and the Northeast KCK Heritage Trail. Within the GoDOT mobility strategy, there's a lot of discussion around spending versus investing and the difference between the two. Uh, we want to position Wyandotte County for uh, transportation uh, improvements as investing in our community's future through the smart use of, fi use of finite resources, spur future and private investment, uh, small projects that connect communities, improve safety, and reduce barriers to accessing jobs and destinations often have 
a very high return on investment. So what comes out of this plan stemming from those five big ideas, uh, specific actions and policy recommendations. Again, there's an update to the um, sidewalk and trails master plan, as well as a uh, streets master plan update with recommended cross sections, depending on um, the land use area type uh, and, and functional classification of the roadway. There are um, policy modernization uh, recommendations, uh, including internal policies and processes with, within uh, departments at the UG. Uh, the plan concludes with an action plan matrix that specifies uh, action items that align with those five big ideas, um, as, as well as where those actions are coming from. Future funding opportunities, uh, again, I mentioned the infrastructure bill. There are a lot of federal opportunities with the infrastructure bill that the county is well positioned for, um, as well as green infrastructure and climate related opportunities uh, and sources within uh, within the state of Kansas, such as from, from KDOT. Again, the GoDOT uh, strategic mobility plan is, the, is going to segue into the citywide master plan update. It'll serve as the transportation element. Um, we view this as a lasting process for Wyandotte County. Uh, this plan was developed at a, a quite unique point in time. We started um, that, you know, sort of in the height of the pandemic in, in early 2021. Uh, we want to think of transportation as a community asset and ingredient for community building. Uh, this requires continued investment, monitoring, and internal alignment. So what's next? Uh, again, we have incorporated comments from this commission, from UG staff, from various stakeholders, uh, both internal within, within the county, different departments, um, and from uh, independent cities and, and other agencies that have weighed in, um, as well as comments from the board, look for approval from this commission and then adoption from the board later this month through three individual resolutions. After that, uh, there's lots of immediate term actions to carry out, grant applications, looking for infrastructure bill funding, the segue into the citywide master plan. And then as mentioned, moving forward one investment at a time, aiming to provide uh, the current and future generations within the county, lasting value and a vibrant and safe future for all. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gallo. Any questions, uh, Commissioner Connell? Uh, I just like to say, I mean, it looks great and everything. Um, and 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 I, I mean, I keep hearing you saying the funding and things like that. I mean, when when do you think the first phase of us would could start? Do, is there any funding there? already for us to go ahead and get some of it done or or we have to raise all the money at this point in time uh it's so everything's incremental there's there's a, a series of action items that are some of some of which are already underway to be honest um so some of which are, are internal um there are several items that are being targeted specifically for infrastructure bill grants that are going to move forward uh pretty quickly hopefully um others have you know yet to be identified uh, funding sources that um you know, will be some some of which may be borne by private developers, um, specifically with the the sidewalk and trails master plan, looking to um, identify those locations where where private developers would would um, would contribute, and then um, looking to incorporate certain improvements along with maintenance. So as maintenance comes around, as we look to as we're repaving a roadway or or, or redoing a road, reconstructing a roadway, implementing improvements at that time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, what you presented, I mean, it, it would be great for uh, Wyandotte, um, but I mean, the way it sounds like it's one of those projects that we we vote on and plan on, and but it never happens. So that's that's all I got to say. Thanks. Sure, and there there are um, there are elements that are in the action plan that are have have already taken place and moved forward. Um, but again, it, it's going to be incremental so there's there's a lot of big ideas there's there's you know a, a whole network of trails that is you know we may be years and years away from but certain certain elements may be much more near term all right thank you thank you thank you other questions okay i think we're good so what you're looking for for us are individual recommendations uh of the the resolutions to take to the board of commissioners is that correct that is correct okay and Janet, you want you need separate ones for each one, correct? That is correct, sir. Okay, so at this time, I will entertain a motion to recommend approval of the resolution regarding the North 
East Kansas City, Kansas Heritage Trail Plan to the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Jones. I make a motion to approve um, the Northeast Kansas City, Kansas Heritage Trail Plan. Thank you. Motions for approval on the Northeast Kansas City, Kansas Heritage Trail Plan recommendation of the Board of County Commissioners. Is that a second, Commissioner Pauley? It is. Thank you. Any discussion on that recommendation? Seeing none, roll call, please. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Commissioner Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion passes. Seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. Now I will look for a recommendation on the Merriam Connected Corridor Plan. Commissioner Jones? Motion to approve the Merriam Connected Corridor Plan. Thank you. Motion has been made to recommend approval to the Board of Commissioners, the Merriam Connected Corridor Plan. Is that a second, Commissioner Pauley? It is. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion passes. Seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. And then finally, we need a motion to recommend approval on the GoDOT Countrywide Strategic Mobility Plan to the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Jones. Last but not least, I make a motion to approve the GoDOT Countywide Strategic Mobility Plan. A motion is for approval and recommendation of the Board of Commissioners on the GoDOT Countrywide Strategic Mobility Plan made by Commissioner Jones. Is that a second once again, Commissioner Pauley? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Ward? Aye. Beth? Aye. Conley? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion passes. Seven in favor and none opposed. Thank you. These will all be recommended to the Board of County Commissioners at their next meeting on August 25th at 7 p.m. Is that correct, Janet? That is correct. All right, thank you. Is there any other items of business that we need to discuss before adjourning? Mr. Chairman, I do not have anything. Okay, Mr. Uh, excuse me, Commissioner Connell, you have your hand up? Uh, yes. I guess I'd like to list of all of people that's on the board or can we go to the website and see it? Because it's like I'm, some people's moved or changed. Are you talking about Board of County Commissioners? Yeah, planning and zoning, no, I'm sorry. Oh, ours, okay. Our board, yeah. Yes. In terms of the website not being updated, no, I'm just saying I don't know. I don't know some of the members. I mean, it seems like some people left, or and it's been some replacements. Yes, our, our two them. our two newest replacements are Commissioner Ward and Commissioner Beth, and they've been on for what the last couple of months, couple three months now. Janet, is that correct? Several months, yes. Yeah, who did they replace? I guess that's the that's the question I'm asking. Commissioner Cho and Commissioner is it was it reasons. Uh, no. Huey. Or was it Huey? Oh, Huey. Yes. Commissioner Huey and Commissioner Cho. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? No. All right. Well, seeing nothing else, 833, well, not a bad uh, night. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Not, are we not going to sing happy birthday to Chairman Carson? No, I have control of the mute uh, buttons. Sure. Let me go ahead and turn the recording off first, though. <laughs> <laughs>